it's the black canvas. But you know, like we tell you all the time, you don't have to wait till a new year to start a new beginning. You can go ahead and actually start it today or last week. I got a lot of people on TV talking about, man, it's a new year, you know, it's a new me. It's like, nigga, it's the same old you. With DC ST. The whole 10 minutes, the manager kept on asking me, like, man, you want me to call an ambulance? Like, you want me to call an ambulance? And I was like, no, no, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they all got to They got to get rid of all of our leaders, man, and then like throw more dumb shit in our face to distract us, man. Like Chanel purses. <laughs> 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 Presented by for real. By for real, yeah, yeah. Jordans. What a ceiling is the roof. And now, EC. One eight seven seven cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Do they charge cars today? <laughs> <laughs> no man, no, I've heard that shit so much, man. Like it's it's, it's so catchy though, man. What's up with you? Yeah. What's going on, EC? How you feeling, man? Really good. And you know, I was thinking about, I was like, uh, if I was ever going to be in the movie Purge, like, that's a song I'll be singing as I'm coming down the street with like a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Here come EC. <laughs> he would just be like in the corner, like shaking, like, what are you seven, seven cups for you? <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, what's that one joint from, was it Walking Dead? Yeah, Walking yeah. Dead. Yeah, they kept playing the, I think it was like a happy song or whatever over yeah, and over again. C Street. Yeah. <laughs> it's so sweet. No, I would have like I would have, cause I'm the kind of person that like like likes that kind of stuff. So when I was yeah. in my solitary confinement, I probably was singing along with that bitch. <laughs> Real easy street. Like you can't break me, devil. You can't break me. <laughs> and then the whole time behind the door, like and, and you. <laughs> Like, yeah, just, he like, you screaming. All he is like, dang, he tough. And then behind the door, it's like, snot, tears. <laughs> <laughs> <Going down. laughs> you can't pay me. <laughs> oh, man. But, man, how was your past weekend, man? Man, uh, it was pretty straight, man. I had to go. Um, man, I was feeling kind of in a nostalgic mood, man. So I went and bought a whole bunch of old PS3 games, man. Um <laughs> Yeah, I went and bought uh, Red Dead Redemption. Okay. Um, the Mass Effect trilogy. Uh, what else I get? Uh, oh yeah, uh, San Andreas. Oh yeah, that's my shit. Um, uh, and then also, man, you know, just I guess like the whole entire month of April, nigga, I was going to Wendy's every day, and what I was. Uh, what was you getting? Well, I was buying a salad. Okay. So. You know, I think it's yeah, it's the apple pecan salad that they have. So I was like, man, I need to start wasting my money. So what I did was I went to, you know, of course I went to the store mm-hmm. and I bought my own stuff. You know, pretty much everything that they made in the salad, I pretty much brought it home and made my own that way. So I can stop going there and spending all my money. Kind of got to be smart now. So with our, with our money, we can't. We can't afford to, you know, jack off no more now that, you know, this this new regime is uh yeah, yeah. is here, so new world order in this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> how how did how did how did damn it, how did that shit go? How did that song go? New World Order for uh wrestling. Uh, damn 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 yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. They ain't got anything out for it, but, you know, everybody. Know. Rockstar could just put out. Rockstar, if it, people that don't know Rockstar uh, Games is a studio that makes Grand Theft, uh, Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption, and um, the other multi-million dollar games, man. Mm-hmm. They, they make billions of dollars, and they put, like, two games out every, like, three to five years. They're so popular, and they have so much acclaim. That they could put out another Grand Theft Auto, name the city, 
and don't show us shit, and we will buy it. That's yes, how much of a track. That's how much of a track record they have now. Uh, like a real quick story. I never forget the time freshman year of college. Vice City came out. <laughs> so, so my fucking age. Vice City came out, man, and uh, I didn't have a car yet, and so I like looked up on um. <laughs> MapQuest, that's showing how really old I am. I look on MapQuest <laughs> to see how far like walking distance it is from my dorm to uh what was it, Stonecrest Mall, whatever the name of that mall was? Uh Stones Funny. River. Stone yep, Stone River Mall. Yeah. I walk from <laughs> I walk from my dorm all the way to Stone <laughs> River Mall and back <laughs> and bought Vice City. And when I got back, that's back about when I was fat. I had a rash in between my thighs for a week <laughs> because I had walked so far, dude. I was like, I can't believe I did this shit, dude. <laughs> it was worth it. it, was worth it. Hell yeah, but I played all night, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, speaking of which, man, what, what was your favorite? I know my least favorite Grand Theft Auto. What's your, uh, what's your favorite Grand Theft Auto? Uh, man, I think four was probably my favorite. Four was what, Nikolai? Yeah, Nicolo Bellic. Yeah, Nicky Obelic, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was, yeah, that was my joint. I just wish it was, I, I wish it would, had been more, I guess, I wish you could have bought more, I guess, like with your money. Yeah. Like this one, like this past one was cool because, you know, the stocks and everything. Like that was, that was, that was fun. I like that. But I think, I don't know, there's just certain elements of five that I, that I like better. Exactly. And then some elements of four that I like better. Somebody was complaining, man. There's one dude was reviewing the game. He was complaining, talking about, um, I didn't like how, he said he didn't like how you switch between three players at once. He kind of wanted to just, like, go through one person's story and not yeah. switch between three. I like to switch between all three, between, um, Trevor, um, and the um, other, Franklin yeah. and the other one, other dude. Yeah, I kind of do too. I, it was, you know, it was different, but I would, I would guess, for I guess the rest of the series, they won't do that again. Yeah, uh, I, I think that was an experiment. Yeah, that's why I think so. As and, well. I, and I think a lot of people, mostly like, I said they took a poll. It wouldn't be like twenty percent people saying they they uh they they liked it compared to yeah. people say they hated it. Yeah. I think all of them had distinct stories. Uh, I know what they probably I know why they probably did it because they probably couldn't get a big enough story for one character and make it interesting. Yeah, probably, that's probably not. That's probably exactly why they did that. But man, my favorite shit, my favorite probably was five. And then it would be uh San Andreas. Yeah. And my least favorite is probably like three. I didn't like three at all. Really? Yeah, I did not care for three. Why not? I guess it's like revision is like I guess it's like hindsight looking back at it now. Yeah. See how far they come. Yeah. When I played, I didn't have as much fun as I did, like I had in in previous games. Like, cause in, cause I will say this in five, I think I spent the most time just like running around doing crazy shit. Yeah. In San Andreas <laughs> compared okay. to any of the other ones, because you know you can be fat, you can get muscular. Yeah. Yeah, you can pretty much get like a jetpack. You can uh, that's I think the first time you could um. It was the first time they had like multiple cities and you could fly jets over so like multiple cities within the game. It was like a, a bigger game mm. compared to the other ones. Yeah. But, but yeah, man, like I'm looking for, I didn't play, I didn't play Red Dead Redemption. So what I'm going to do is what they're going to have a remastered version. Yeah. I'll play the remastered version. And then when the, uh, the new one come out, I'll play that shit. Okay. But all right. We can get, we can get out these games real quick. Let's go ahead and get to the, the NFL draft, man. How much of the draft you watch? I pretty much watched. All the way up till about, I think about the fifth round. That's 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 normal. That's what most people do. Yeah, and then yeah. after that, uh, yeah, it was pretty I got much shit to do. Yeah, it was, it was pretty much solidified as far as you know where people were going and you know what I guess what really mattered. But um, it, you know it was pretty good. It, it definitely surprising, that's for sure. You could say that shit again, dude. Like <laughs> I was with my boy Jay House, and right when the trade happened between the Forty ers and the Bears. I was like, okay, they come, they come up to get Solomon Thomas, or they're gonna get, um, they're gonna jump the Jaguars and get Leonard Fournette. Yeah. And when I saw them motherfuckers draft Mitchell Trubisky, yeah, I said, what the fuck, dog? Yeah. This is the beginning of the end for John Fox. Yeah. And that GM, because reports came out that said 
the GM did not tell John Fox what he was doing with that pick for two yeah. weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and John Fox found out what we found out. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I, well, I thought they said he found out maybe minutes before. Yeah, minutes, minutes before the draft. Yeah. Min, yeah, minutes before the draft started. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we, we, we gonna do what? <laughs> it was like, did we just sign, like, Mike Glennon to a deal? Like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, and turn the card in. What? <laughs> <laughs> and then they said well, they were, it was a whole bunch of infighting. Uh, it was a whole bunch of infighting in the, uh, in the draft room. So this is the beginning of the end for Fox. Like, the other way John Fox could stay, uh, should they have to make the playoffs this year, which is not going to happen. And they have to at least get past the first round, they have to at least get past the first round. Or, Fox is going to have to coach up Trubisky. And I'm talking about Trubisky going to have to just like throw like 4,000 yards, 50 touchdowns, and like maybe like 10 picks for him to keep the job, man. But this, yeah. this reminds me a lot of Jeff Fisher and, um, Jared Goff. Jared Goff, man. Yeah. Like, you just, you try to plug him in, the shit didn't work. It was like, bye bye, man. They got. I'll- I don't think I don't think it was that. I think with Jared Goff, it's just well, Jeff Fisher has his staff. They kind of have a bad, I guess, a bad rap for being able to develop a quarterback. So, and I think that's what it was. Jared Goff wasn't ready in the beginning. Yeah. So you know, for him to be, you know, the number one pick, and he, you know, he not even be able to. To, to read an NFL defense or do something as simple as progress through his, you know, his, uh, his, reads. his yeah, his reads. Yeah. You know, it's kind of bad. He, they, they've never been good at developing rookie quarterbacks. So I think what that was with this bear situation though. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just the GM. He wanted to do his own thing. Maybe he's under so, you know, maybe he feels that he's under so much pressure. So he figures he has to get a game changer right here and right now. And, you know, I guess I think he fell for the hype. Just, you know, based simply off, you know, Mitchell Trubisky being, you know, I guess hot for like 15 minutes because I don't see it. I, I don't understand why they would sign a quarterback, Mike Glennon, for the money, for the amount of money that they signed him for and then turn back around. And draft the quarterback in the first round. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they're trying to do. Maybe they're trying. They maybe they want Mitchell Trubisky to be Aaron Rodgers of the future of the Bears. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Maybe they're giving Mike Glennon three years to you know to to lead lead yeah, the charge they, they, they and teach up, the youngin. So, yeah. You know. I don't they, know. Maybe. They gave up all. They gave up all that. Yes, they did. He he ain't sit. He ain't sitting. Man, he gonna sit maybe one year. Or he might just sit until the bye week, homie. If like if it's not going well, mm-hmm. and another an- another trade, like all the quarterbacks went like back to back to back. The quarterback in the best position is Patrick Mahomes, because you know for sure he's going to yeah. at least sit two years behind Alex Smith. And oh, that's yeah. just a Super Bowl team. Like ain't no way in hell they're going to be like let's scrap let's scrap Alex and let's go straight to Patrick Mahomes. And Patrick Mahomes is not ready. No, he's in not. the best position. Deshaun Kaiser is fucked. He went to the Browns. <laughs> he screwed. Um, Deshaun Watson actually is in a second Deshaun, best position. Deshaun Watson, I, uh, to be honest, I think Deshaun's in the best position because his whole team is built. He, I don't think he's ready though, but he has the he has the best team around him. He may not be. He may, yeah, exactly. He may not be ready, but he has the best team around him. Yep. Offense, defense, and special teams. Like Kansas City is straight on defense. They like they 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 packed on defense. Um, like offense, yeah. They got Jamie Macklin and you know, eh. and they just lost you know Jamal Charles. They just let him go. So I don't know. Like as far as an entire team outlook, yeah, I think I think Deshaun Watson's in the best the best uh, position because to be honest, you put if you put Tony Romo on the Texans, they could win the Super Bowl today. Yeah. If you put Tony Romo on the Chiefs, I don't know if they could win the Super Bowl today. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't really know 
if they have the offensive weapons to compensate for his talent. But I yeah. think Deshaun Watson's in the best best position. Yeah, if he could just go in and learn that playbook, it's just it's just yeah. a thing about man. This this is the thing that that coaches are fucking up these young quarterbacks. The yeah. one thing, these, these coaches are fucking up these young quarterbacks by just throwing them into a system that they cannot they they, they cannot play under. Yeah. That's why coaches like uh, Kyle Shanahan is a head coach. Yeah, that's why coaches like Adam Gase. Our head coaches because they go ahead and tailor the offense around that player like Adam Gates did with uh, Tim Tebow, how he did with Peyton Manning. That's two, <laughs> different, that's two different spectrums. Like, <laughs> the playoffs, Adam Gates, what he doing? And he's somewhat doing it with Ryan Tannehill in Miami. Nah, I wouldn't say all that. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did it with Jay Cutler until Jay Cutler got hurt. So he's a, he's a quarterback whisperer that doesn't get he gets enough credit. People talk yeah. about him enough. Um, there's a thing, man. Bill O'Brien not changing his his system for anybody. His system that he's running is what Tom Brady runs. Yeah, and that's the thing though. The thing about Bill O'Brien is, I think Bill O'Brien is a good enough coach to bring along anybody. He's an offensive coach who can he he's he's somewhat of a quarterback whisperer too. The only difference is his quarterbacks that he's been getting just haven't had the the measurables to get it done. They nut shrink in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, it's just like man, like the whispers. The whispers were were called to a halt uh, in the playoffs. <laughs> Brian Hoyer threw them four picks. <laughs> yeah. And you know they they should have just saw that from when he was with Cleveland. Like you, yeah. know, you don't you don't pick up no ex Cleveland quarterback. No, nah, man. And then he he on the he on the Forty ers man. How does he keep getting work? I know. <laughs> I know. I don't understand it either. I do not understand it, man. But man, the Baltimore Ravens. Man, the, this is the thing. Like, I'm trying to find a good analogy for it. <laughs> now, you know, when you see like a glaring weakness, yeah, in yourself, yeah, you go overboard with trying to cover up that weakness. Let's say you got like a, let's say you got crooked eyes and like a a, must, a fucked up nose. Yeah. So you go ahead and just you know get all the money that you that you can and try to fix your nose up. And then you try to fix your eyes up as best you can, where everything just looks looks uh, looks like that, but your teeth fucked up too. <laughs> the thing we did, man, we had the 17th ranked defense last year. We went straight defense, man, for the first four rounds, and we did not get a wide receiver whatsoever, man. And uh, we were trying to get, we we wanted to get Corey Davis, but the motherfucker went to them, the Titans with the fifth pick. I was crushed, ST. <laughs> I was crushed. I was like, no. <laughs> and then the Bengals, and we'll get on them motherfuckers in a minute. Yep. Uh, they got Ross. Yep. I was like, I thought we could at least get John Ross, man. You know, like we're gonna talk about the Bengals draft in a minute, but the Bengals draft. This is this is. Dang it! This is uh, Marvin Lewis. Is this is last chance? Like motherfucker, if I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go out swinging. This is this exactly. is what the draft was. Yep. We we went straight, man. We went all defense, and the guys that we picked up are great pass rushers. But our first round pick will not get on the field this year because we we're, we're all set in the secondary. <laughs> um, our second, third round pick will touch the field if they can beat out who we have on the field now. And then the linemen are gonna have to be plugged into play, and they were like fourth and fifth rounders. So man, this is this wasn't this was a decent draft. This is this is the kind of draft where I where I'll look on it like in the middle of the season and we have like a top ten defense and mm-hmm. I just look I just look look at my team and then like just like shake my head like turn my head to the side and shake my head like he knew he was doing he got it. <laughs> but as of right now, it's just kind of just like man, you know, I don't know man, you gotta get Flacco weapons and then Flacco came out like a week before the draft and said we don't need weapons and I was like man, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, like, dude, I talked about this shit last week. Like, dude, we need weapons. And we didn't get any. And we signed a whole bunch of, like, unrestricted rookie free agents, man, that won't make the team. They were like, we got, like, Peter, like, three wide receivers. They, like, got the height, weight, and speed. But all of them, I researched them. Like, the most of them just are inconsistent, can't catch the ball. Mm. But what do you think about, um, you're just a fan of the draft. Like, what do you think about, like, the, the, the popular players? Like, do you think. Uh, Christian McCarry is going to fit with um, the Panthers, or you think he should have gone somewhere else? I think it's a good look because it gives them it gives them an extra attack, and it also boosts 
that running game, man. Because, I mean, let's face it, they needed some help. Cam needs more weapons, dude. Like, yeah, he does. He, he, you know, for the longest, I think for like the first four or five years of his career, the only person he had was Greg Olson. Yeah. Uh, he needed something. And, you know, with, with Ted Ginn gone, who was kind of kind of inconsistent. He caught like, the game. He could have caught that pass over the middle. He dropped that shit. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I think they could definitely use help in the receiving ranks. Yeah. Um, because the I don't know the, the the guys that they have are just too inconsistent, uh, and you know them beefing up that that defensive line again after getting rid of Coney Ely, that was you know I guess, I guess we'll see how that turns out. But yeah, I think overall I don't know they needed they needed help on both sides of the ball. Yeah, they did. This now you know who really really liked that Christian McCaffrey pick. Who's that? Jonathan Stewart. Oh yeah, <laughs> because those are two they're two different kind of backs. Yeah, Leonard Fournette would have gone to the pay uh, the pep like I wanted him to. Yeah, peace out, nigga. He'd have been gone. Yeah. Uh, that's why I really wanted man Leonard Fournette with Cam Newton would have been crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that shit would have been crazy, man. But you know what division got got real dynamic? Uh, NFC South. Ah, uh. look all the weapons that James got, man. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Jesus. They they went ham, Jesus. dude. Yes, the Buccaneers put in they, work. They finna be right. Yeah, man. They got the, they got Deshaun Jackson, Mike Michael uh, Mike Evans, they got OJ Howard. Yes. And OJ Howard run like a four five. Yeah. He can block. How he failed that far is beyond me. Dude, like when all these players start, the reason they failed was because of the quarterbacks going. And I was pissed off when we passed up on Ruben Foster. I was mm. pissed off when we passed up on we passed up on like two or three dudes. I wanted OJ Howard. I wanted him, but mm. we had like eight. We had like eight tight ends. So we, yeah, shit, we ain't gonna do it. Y'all usually stack up on tight ends every year. So. <laughs> yeah, we do, man. We got like because we did, we did sign Benjamin Watson, so it does make sense why we didn't pick him. Yeah. Then uh, I remember Ozzy saying like out of all the prospects on the board at that time, he was the cleanest one. As far as medical off the field issues and on the field issues, the cleanest player out of the three, because I know Ruben Foster has a shoulder issue that that's going to linger into yep. this season. Yep. And they say he might need surgery this uh, another surgery this year, so that's yep. why I, we didn't take him. If he didn't have that issue, we would have taken him, man, because he's like he Patrick Willis 2.0 and he going straight to the 49ers. Yep. Well, let's go ahead and get to it, man. Dog, what you think about the Bengals picking up Mixon? I think it's it's warranted. They needed it. They needed it bad. I think so. Don't get me wrong. Jeremy Hill and what's the other kid? Hill by Bernard. Yeah, Bernard. Like, yeah, they uh, they are all right, but I don't think they were. I don't think they were hitting it. Like, it they needed to make their offense a bit more dynamic, and this is going to help them. This is going to help. What's his face? Uh, the quarterback. Uh, Andy Dalton. Yeah, this is going to make Andy Dalton a whole lot. Better as far as you know, a scheme like attacking the defense, and it's probably the perfect place for Joe Mixon to go. To be totally honest, because you know it's not too big of a city, but it's big enough so yep. that you know he can you know do his thing and hopefully stay out of trouble. But you know, as they were saying, you know, everybody within the community in Oklahoma, they were saying that you know he's pretty much a good guy. So it is just that one incident, you know, in which, you know, he he allowed his anger to take over. And, you know, unfortunately, some young lady had to suffer the consequences for that. And so did he. Yeah, he did. So, yeah, you know. because I was watching the NFL Network uh, interview that he had with Judy Batista. Mm -hmm. And she she asked him, um, how are you going to make amends with the community for what you've done? Because it's going to follow you throughout your whole career. He was like, man, like my my. My job is really not to prove them wrong. Yeah. It's just to be who I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People out there worse than that is going to be judging this dude. Yeah. That's, that's probably beat up on women constantly, but it just, it just wasn't on camera. Yeah. And, and see, just, that, that's the ahead. thing, man. Like, I think, I think that's really actually kind of hyperbole. Mm -hmm. Um, I think once you get into the, if you made mistakes in the past and you get in the NFL and you ball out, like your past ceases to exist until yep. you do something else. 
that makes them go back. Oh yeah, see, we we told you, but Kobe. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> if if Mixon gets in here and is a sub sixteen hundred yard runner every year, man, they they not they not gonna be thinking about what he did in college. I'm telling you that right now. They're not they're not gonna think about it. Cause already, look at Tyreek Hill from the Chiefs. Yep. He he was punished for the same thing. He ran back hot what, like three or four kick kickoffs back? They ain't thinking about Tyreek no more. They was like, Man, Tyreek is a good player. You know, he knows how to, you know, get his teammates hype around him. They don't talk about that no more. So if you can come into the NFL and succeed after your past transgressions, Man, we ain't think about that. You just better do a good job of making sure that you don't step in it no more. So that that's that's how that works, man. That's pretty much it, man. You, you hit the nail on the head, man. If, if he balls out, everybody like even even women that have a Joe Mixon jersey. Like yeah. if he like if, let's say he like it's like fourth and one, and it's the first round of the playoffs, and he he's the one that runs it in and sends them to the, the semifinal round. Yeah. They were like, man, we love you, Joe. We yeah, you. exactly. Like what did he do? What did he do a few years ago? <laughs> like I think I think he uh I think he jaywalked. Like he <laughs> <laughs> didn't do nothing. And then the girl got paid off too, and she even like put out a letter saying, "Man, um, let's both move past this because that, yeah. that, that was the money talking. So let's both move past this, and I wish you the best in the future because I know she got broke off." Oh yeah, come on. Man. How much did she got, man? You think she got? She probably got about about two million, maybe something like that. At least about, at least about close to that. She's talking about to go to grad school. Grad school paid for, and she mm-hmm. ain't gonna go to grad school. She's smart. She can invest that shit. Not even go to grad school. Waste her fucking money. Pretty much. Hell yeah, man. But um, it, <laughs> I think Bigs going to the Bengals was funny to me, man, because you know <laughs> Bengals have always had a rap of like taking in like bad yeah. players. Yeah. Cause they were like the Oakland Raiders of the old. Yeah. And then, like, a couple of years ago, like, they would always take on bad players. Yep. But like I said before, uh, in the beginning of the uh, podcast, man, like, this is Marvin Lewis, like, last, this is his, uh, this is his last stance. He's mm-hmm. like, man, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out swinging with as many weapons as I can. Like, man, cause, <laughs> cause I was talking to Jay at the draft, I was like, man, the AFC North got so many weapons, we need these DBs. Yeah. This is like, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What's up with, um, Dang it! Who did the the Steelers drafted a wide receiver, and then Martavius Bryant yeah. and Sammy? Oh, <laughs> yeah, you you read, you read that jump? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, it was on NFL Network. They were going back and forth about how he was Juju Smith. Yeah, was, to replace uh one of their jobs, he was like, "It's not mine. I just got back." <laughs> oh no, he can't even talk shit, man. He just he he, 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 he uh he's a spender for weed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. if he don't watch himself, he gonna be suspended again or kicked all the way out. Yeah, yeah, but he is right, man. Like, Juju is replacing Sammy Colts because you can't replace yeah. what Martavius does. Martavius is like straight burner, son. Yes, straight, straight up speed. burner. Hey, no, what, <laughs> what we going to do against all that shit? <laughs> what we going to do? Like, AJ Green and Ross, that dude run a 4-4-2? Yeah. Uh, and we, we we did the right thing bolstering our, our, uh, our secondary because we knew this shit was coming, man. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see. They're going to pick on Jimmy Smith, man. Jimmy Smith about to foes, <laughs> man. Hey, I'm so much I hate Jimmy. <laughs> God, dog, man. Well, we extended that bastard out cuss. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, any of us before we wrap up the, the draft talk? Uh, Mr. Irrelevant was funny. He got screwed. Uh, we we uh, yeah. <laughs> you, it's better not to go. It's better to not even get drafted if you're going to be the last pick. At least you can go. You can pick where you go. But I think like you, I think like they set it up though. You, they they kind of give you some kind of special package, but like they give you like uh, oh, yeah, your parade, yeah, stuff like that, money and all the other stuff. Cause they, you know, yeah, real you, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, I would rather be made fun of, you know, made a joke out of, and then still try to, you know, get on the team and you know secure my spot, than to you know not have been picked at all. And then try to have to, you know, find my way onto a team. I guess it just depends on the person. But um, the the night the cool thing, in my opinion, the cool thing about being an undrafted free agent is number number one, you get to actually see everybody that drafted, everybody's on the depth chart, 
and then you can yeah. see where you maybe you can fit and maybe have a chance to make the squad. And yeah, then number two, they do pay you signing bonuses. They pay under the undrafted free agent signing bonuses to get them to come, especially if like team bidding on you. Yeah. But the most I've seen is like twenty five twenty five thousand dollars that they give you. Mm. Uh, like, that's like the max signing bonus for undrafted free agents. And then they pay your fees to try out for the team because that shit ain't free just to try out for the team. It's a lot because it's like equipment, travel, yeah. all the other shit. Yeah. So they pay for that as well. But people, people need to understand. Half of NFL rosters every year has undrafted free agents on it. Yep. Malcolm Butler was undrafted free agent. Yes, he was. Uh, who else? Um, uh, Victor Cruz. I, I think over. I think what? I think a quarter of the league. Quarter of the league is always undrafted. Yeah. Yeah, it's comprised of undrafted. You free know why? Agents. That hunger, son. Exactly. They come in and they ball out. That's the reason why that show undrafted is, you know, in existence because they get in there and they don't take, you know, they don't take their opportunity for granted. You know, these second round, second and third round picks who, you know, get cut because they, you know, not looking over their shoulder and, you know, being complacent. Yep. And that's what happens. You see a beast, you see a fucking beast in the bushes coming to take that shit. Yep. And Kurt Warner was undrafted, undrafted, uh, free agent. Look, he about to go in the Hall of Fame this year. Yep. Yeah, dude. It's all about that hunger. Cause I remember he put out a post. He was like, man, if you don't get drafted, he was just like, hey, just know that you can go from being undrafted to being a Super Bowl champion to being going into the Hall of Fame. It's all about how you finish and not about how you start. Yep. And that's about everything in life. And then, oh, yeah. uh, our safety on the Ravens, Tony Jefferson, he was an undrafted, uh, free agent. Look at him now. He getting paid by us. Three year deal. Making that guac. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. So I'm more interested in seeing like training camp. I'm looking forward to see who like to see who um yep. comes through a training camp of balls out. That's what I'm really yep. looking forward to, man. Who's flourishing, yep. Yeah, those are more interesting than like the dudes you know that's gonna play good, like the Leonard Fournette's mm-hmm. and McCaffrey's and Corey Davis, all of them. You know they're gonna they're gonna be decent. Yeah. But oh okay. yeah, man, speaking of speaking of high draft picks, man. I was watching Outside the Line real quick to get off football. I watched Outside the Line, and they had a special on Ryan Leaf. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think I saw that. You saw that shit, man? Yeah. That shit fucking crazy, dude, yeah. how uh, he was on opioids. Yeah. And how he went to jail for a couple years, and, like, he's just gotten out, and now he's just like, talking about his sobriety and just talking about he's trying to help people. And, I, and he was talking about the last appearance he made on ESPN before uh, he went to jail. Cause he was like trying to promote a book mm-hmm. and he like looked Bob Levy in the eyes. He was like, man, that whole time I was here going from show to show, I was just straight lying and lying to everybody. Just trying to sell a book. Wow. He was just like, man, I, w- I hadn't changed. I was the same asshole. He was just like the one, the one thing that he said that stuck with me was he said, man, I felt like I was above everybody. Once I had the fame and the money, I saw everybody as ants, Mm-hmm. And nobody, nobody, everybody seems insignificant to me. Well, and we saw that, like, yeah. when, you know, like, <laughs> as during his playing career. Yeah, then when he yelled at the reporter. Yeah, we saw, we saw that already. We, we knew. Yeah. So I'm telling you, man, we're going to see some sad stories, man, because every time I watch like an old, like on a Saturday one, all in the off season in the NFL, you see like, hey, Ricky, welcome to the NFL. It'd be like a mm-hmm. 2013 edition. Yep. I never get time I watched like 2012 edition. I was like, man, he out the league, he out the league, he out the league, he a backup. Yep. It's the same thing's gonna happen, man, with the um this 2015 class, man, because the 2011 class, I think the whole all 32 of the players in the 2011 class are either not with their team or they're out the league, and I think like yep. five of them are still producing, dude. What Cam, uh, JJ Watt, uh. What is his name from the Broncos? Um, was it a running back? No, the the linebacker, the corny nigga. Uh, Von Miller. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, Von Miller, he corny as hell. He got like a, a Super Bowl fifty tattoo on his whole damn leg. I can't do that shit, man. I don't mm-hmm. care if I won that job. The ring is enough. Yeah, that's yeah. right. The ring is enough, man. Ho- ho- hopefully, it don't get stolen. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that's enough. But yeah, uh, yeah man. I enjoyed the draft. Um, I'm looking forward to rookie uh, rookie minicamp. Hopefully nobody gets injured. Mm-hmm. It's usually somebody gets injured every rookie minicamp. 
Yep. Every single time somebody tear, tears the ACL, man, it'd be like a top 10 pick, too. Yeah, I was about to say, hopefully it's not a... It was not, not McCaffrey, a man. Yeah. <laughs> it's this weekend, too. Over there McCaffrey, dude. Yeah. Well, poor Nett. Are they trying to stick stick too hard? Mm-hmm. Got to, trying to do too much. Too much, man. Sh- showing out in front of your teammates. Oh, yeah, man. Ain't got time for that shit. Make it to the fucking season. But welcome to another episode of the Blank Canvas Podcast. We are a weekly topical podcast that comes on every Wednesday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, on your favorite podcasting services, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and Audio Mac. And you can also follow us on your uh, favorite social media sites. That's Twitter, at Blank Canvas ECST, and yep. also on Instagram, at Blank Canvas ECST, and Facebook, at the same address. So, ST, so you try to bring back one of our old segments that we you know did one time and then we you know we stopped doing it <laughs> <laughs> and you never really brought it back up either it was just kind of like something that just kind of fell in the obscurity it was, just, yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a it was a good idea you had a, it was a really good idea that you brought up too <laughs> it was just you know i just i don't know just all of a sudden i think we did it with like what two two weeks in a row and then it just kind of fell off the face of the earth yeah i guess you know it, i guess in lieu of the news we just gonna just come back with the bullshit side note of the week. And without further ado, let's get into the show. Let's go. Yeah. It's the bullshit side note of the week. Yeah, baby. Come on in. The water's fine. Dog, you know what's, you know what, you know what is bullshit, dude. What's that? How we were bring this up, man. How Ed Water was asked to cover the draft after he got fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so people that don't know, Ed Water is a reporter for ESPN, and everybody knows if you watch sports or if you live on a rock, like ESPN just purged pretty much the whole staff, mm-hmm. and so. Right after he got fired, he said he was sitting in his hotel room. He got a call from one of his uh, executives. He was like, hey, um, we can go ahead and fly you out to New Orleans. You can cover this. Could you cover the Saints for us for the NFL draft? And he like he said he kind of looked at the phone and was like, are you serious? Like, I'm, I'm fired. Like, why, why would I want to work? And you fired me. He was like, oh, we'll pay you for your time and all this. He was like, man, it, it didn't feel right doing that knowing I'm going to be unemployed right afterwards just uh, let me leave with some dignity yeah and then and another thing another thing that's telling and I think this is the beginning of the end for ESPN we need to always remember this purging that they had yep he said it was really interesting he said that he doesn't know the direction that ESPN is going in because he he always thought it was supposed to be about journalistic inter- integrity and trying mm-hmm. to like follow stories, but it seems like he's like he said it seems like they're trying to get away from that, and they're they're just trying to hire personalities, just yeah. just to talk, and just and just have hot takes. Yeah. And he said that's the direction it's going, and he said I don't think that direction is, is going to be fruitful for them in the long run. Because if you think about it, everybody that stayed are people that yell, yeah, people that have hot takes, and people that are controversial. Like Dan Lebatard, yeah, Stu Gotts, Stephen A. Smith. Um, I like Mass Kellerman. He's not really a, a hot take guy. He just he just real yeah. smart. He just kind of just tells it like it is. And the thing is, if you don't know what a hot take is, a hot take is basically a high powered opinion. That's that's basically what it is. It's, yeah. it's not it's not really anything that's based upon factual increments of information. It's just a high powered opinion that somebody, I guess uh, an opinion that nobody else has come up with yet. Yep. And it'll get, a, it'll get a rise out of the public yep. to get people talking. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. much all it is, man. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're trying to, yeah, I, they, they might be in a situation in which, you know, they're trying to get back, I guess, you know, get, get those high personal profile personalities on air so that they can get their ratings back up. Um, but to be honest, man, I've actually been watching less and less of ESPN. Not, not because of 
I guess them letting people go. Mm-hmm. It's just like the stuff that they've been coming up with hasn't really been moving the needle for me. Like it's, it hasn't been interesting. Like I haven't watched I haven't watched uh, Sports Center at six o'clock yet. Dang, man. At the, the six? Yeah. Watch the six with uh, Bushmouth, Michael Smith. <laughs> yeah, he's stupid. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched that yet. So, I don't know. I think I think the main reason why is because, mm-hmm. like, I was watching, I guess it was the preview for it, and it, they were saying that it's more than just sports. It's, you know, it's entertainment. It's movies. It's it's you know you know uh superstars is like i'm not watching sports center for movies and entertainment nigga i'm watching sports center for sports it's in your name like what what are you doing like why are you doing all this extra stuff so you know espn man i think there's this suffering from that nba deal that they signed you know um that tv deal that they signed a couple of years ago but I think that's that, what it is, man. That's they, part of it, and then them building that big, that new, that new, um, that new studio, the new studio set them yeah, back, dude. Yeah, it's yeah. like nobody's watching your channel for your set. Like we're watching it for the people, and the main thing that you got people watching your channel for, you're getting rid of. So, yep. if, if anything, whoever built that set, you need to take all that stuff back to them i don't think you would get anything for it but no depreciating the value <laughs> oh yeah as soon, as soon as they put the first nail in it's like okay no refunds nah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's like it's, it did like all people that was getting fired yeah. i ain't gonna lie one dude that got fired i'm glad he did because it's <laughs> no I, I, I ain't gonna wish somebody get fired but it's the reese wither whatever his name is that corny black dude let me look his name up, man, because there's it's a couple of dudes that I just can't stand. He's one of them. Another dude I just can't stand uh, is Cole Wright <laughs> from NFL Network. If I ever see him on the street, I'll slap the shit out of his ass. <laughs> that motherfucker's just so extra, man. I just I just hate extra people. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, Reese Withers. I think that's it. Reese Withers. ESPN. Let me see. What's this dude name? It's a black dude. Um, he just he he would be like the the fan correspondent guy. He's like kind of just like found a job for him, which is good for yeah. him. He was working, you know, work with ESPN. But yeah, I don't know. I'm fuck the nigga name. I don't know. But y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. Man, he was just he's just straight corny. And then like his segments weren't funny. Yeah, he was trying too hard. I didn't forget one time he took over ESPN's Twitter handle. And he was like trying to make jokes all throughout the night, and then somebody was like, "Man, give it up, man! Like you a lame man, stop yeah. it, <laughs> yeah. just stop." And he was just like, "Man, y'all ain't no fun, man. Why y'all just hating? Y'all hating because we're ESPN? Because it always goes back to that, like I'm doing something you're not type shit. Exactly. Like, man, sometimes, man, you ain't funny, you ain't funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, like the culture will rock with you, man, regardless. Yeah, if you just being you. Yeah, and but I don't know, man. It, but yeah, there are a lot of reasons why, you know, ESP is going down. And I don't know, can, like, can we really sit here and like list them all? Cause I, I don't mean, there's so many. Like, you know what it, show is really garbage? What's that? Their pregame NBA show is hot. Trash. Baby shit. Garbage. <laughs> like, I can't watch it. That's Michelle Beadle. Uh, I hate Michelle Beadle, man. And um, Jalen Jalen Rose, Rose and Chauncey Billups. Yeah, it just doesn't work, man. It, it, yeah. And I'm not even comparing them to the TNT crew because you can't because they're the best crew for the NBA. Yes, it is. Man. On, on their own merit, they just can't. They're boring. Yeah, they, they don't are. have any chemistry. No. And when they and when they and when they, it was when it was okay is when Michael Wilbon and Magic was on together. Cause they had some sort of chemistry in there, and they knew they were talking about. But just they were just trying to find a job for Michelle Beadle because Michelle yeah. Beadle left and came back. Well, they had to get rid of Magic Johnson though, because Magic Johnson he's not a good he's not a good speaker. <laughs> he shouldn't be on TV speaking to anybody. No, uh, because he be like, he be like saying obvious shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he need to be in that front office running the Lakers, man. Cause we gotta, I guess, we go get PG three, PG thirteen, and go from there, which is not gonna help much, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, I guess so. Damn, yeah, man. Well, we screwed. Yeah. <laughs> um, damn, man. I, man, ST, man, why you
didn't call me out, man. Why you about, didn't call me out, dog? About what? The the bullshit mama of the week went to the wrong person. <laughs> I just thought about it. You know what I'm talking about now, don't you? <laughs> LeVar Ball, man. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to explain the situation or you want me to do it? You go ahead, man, because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be over here laughing. Dude, all right. So <laughs> LeVar Ball has the big ball of brand. <laughs> that, like uh, like uh, outfit line he wants to like pretty much like have his kids market when he goes to the league how about he pitches this shit to Nike Under Armour and Adidas and all three of them say fuck you nigga don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out yep. like he pretty much sabotaged his kids from getting the shoe deal getting out of college and he gonna be a top three yep. pick yep. how you gonna talk yourself out of the deal and the funniest thing I saw on Twitter was they showed LeVar Ball walking into like first take. Yeah. And, and it said, uh, LeVar Ball walking into Skechers. Like, what up? He bit off too, he bit off more than he could chew, man. And I guarantee yeah. you all three executives probably got together and said, fuck them. We ain't going to, none of them going to sign. Yeah. So, yeah, they probably got on the conference call and said, look, we ain't gonna sign him if y'all don't sign him. So, yep. and you know, just I mean, it would have been okay because I mean, what he's looking for is not out of the ordinary. It's not out of the ordinary, and it wouldn't have been that much. It wouldn't have been that much of, I guess, an outlier for the kind of contract that he was seeking because you know, of course, he was seeking that um, the 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 co. Uh, was a codependent deal like I guess it was kind of like kind of like a publishing deal with a with a uh, like for a record label. The only difference is is is, is he was getting a huge cut, he was getting like a huge cut on that shit. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I don't think it would have been out of the ordinary. It's just the simple fact that Lavar Ball, simply put, is a nigga. And yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't be. A word of advice to all the the black people out there who are trying to do like real life business. You can't be a nigga, like a straight up nigga, and think that you can walk into somebody's office and do business. A corporate um, multi being all multi being all industry. Yes, unless you have a product that that commands the market. That in in which they absolutely have no choice but to do business with you, you cannot be, you can't be a boss all the time. And I think that's what it was. Lavar is too busy running his mouth trying to be a boss, and he don't even have an ant hill to stand on for leverage. Exactly. So, now let's say if he had like if Lavar Ball was Lavar James. Yeah. And he had LeBron when he was coming out of high school, then he would have had leverage. I think it would have went through because LeBron, LeBron, his height was through the roof coming out of high school, mm-hmm. dude. So he would have got signed. Point blank, period. I think that would have been more receptive coming to the table talking to him oh, yeah. about the deal than with his son now. Because his son, they said like his. His ceiling, I forgot his ceiling was, but it was like some low level player. It wasn't even like a magic or no, or yeah. like a uh a Malone. It was it was like some like random dude. I was like, That's yeah. the ceiling? I was like, yeah. you, you wanna be a Laker? I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well see the thing is, and you never know, like one of these companies could still possibly, you know, actually bring him in for talks, but I'm I'm they are. Like, like, cause if he balls yeah. out, if homeboy ball out, they're gonna come at the table, don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Is, but but the thing is, there are probably going to be conditions in which his father is not going to be able to be a part of the negotiations, <laughs> and that's and that's the thing. He he's going to have to make a decision. All right, it's 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 either you know you or your father. What's it going to be? And if he's smart, he's going to tell his daddy, "Yo, stay home. Let me, let me get this check. You know, so we can build up a uh, big baller brand on our own." Yep. Because you know we ain't gonna get it done if you if you rolling with us unless you wanna you know go sign with Puma. <laughs> yeah, I know. It had me break my ankles and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucked up shoes. But 
I do. I ain't gonna lie, man. If I was coming out now, and if I was like a top athlete, man, I would sign with Adidas, man. Adidas got some good designs, man, on their shoes. Their shoes well, are fucking sick right now, man. Not only that, man. Adidas yeah. is Adidas is worldwide. Yep. Nike is just now breaking into a global market. Yeah, man. Plus, Nike kind of all Nike really has, man, is Jordan brand. Yeah. Like on their on their own, like their original. If you put their original shoes like toe to toe with the other companies, man, they lacking. They don't even look that good, man. They're like shit. Like oh. right, man, they got some great designers, man. They hired for Adidas, man. I yeah. always used to new Adidas shoes. I, I'm not even a shoe head, and I look at Adidas shoes like, oh, that looks nice. I want my wearing them. Yeah. Yeah, dude, and they're not that expensive. Because they got designers from all over the world that's that's putting in work for them. Yeah, they yeah, clocking in, son. Yeah, they don't they don't mess around. That's a that's a global brand, dude. Adidas is no joke. They they've been ever since ever since I can remember. I mean, even in hip hop, they've been a part. They, I mean, they're a found they're a cornerstone of hip hop. So yep. you know, run DMC. You know, just simple things like that, man. Like just made them. A global empire like Nike, yeah, you got you know Michael Jordan and you know LeBron here or there, but I mean that's that's you know Kobe, you know Kobe shoes suck. LeBron shoes, they suck somewhat. Like some of his shoes are decent, but not all of them. Yeah, yeah, they look like ass. Kyrie shoes look like ass. Like mm-hmm. Kobe shoes are ass. Like nobody's shoes look good, but but Jordans, like, yeah, like, like all like. Well, the old Jordan. The old Jordans, yeah, like the new Jordans, like the um, those new Russell Westbrook shoes. Yeah. These shoes look, these shoes look like hot shit, man. <laughs> I'm just buying them though, cause they Jordans. Yeah. Like, every time I pass, like every time I pass by Wish, everybody know who, if you if you get Atlanta, you know what Wish is. Like I drive yeah. by Wish um every Saturday, come from the gym, and I just be looking at them like, what what shoes y'all niggas waiting on now? Yeah. Like, Cause I never get the time. This one dude tried to uh, rob the whole line. Could they wait on some Lebrons? <laughs> I never get. Yeah, I never get this shit. So, so the dude tried to rob the dudes in line because they wait on Lebron. So they knew everybody at least had two fifty on them. At least two fifty on. Them. Yep. And come to find out, like one of the dudes in line was, was packing and killed the killed the dude. Got back in line. They, he did. They said he literally shot him. Stood back in line, waiting for the cops to get there. Everybody vouched for them, and they went and bought the shoes. Wow. I would have left. I would have like, man, fuck these shoes, man. Yeah, exactly. Man. Yeah, right. They stay. This It's the audacity for them just to stay. Yeah. That just shows how much of the sheep some people are, man. Like, yeah. you're, you're still willing to... Like, somebody, somebody's give you a warning. God's give you a warning. Whatever you believe in, give yeah. you a warning, let you know, hey, you might need to leave. Exactly. And he's like, no, man, it's this, 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 this plastic and this, and these Leather. threads uh, are worth more, worth more yeah. of my life, man. What the? Like, like you, you steadily moving in line while you watching a nigga cough up blood. Yeah, man. They, they literally just watch him die, and, and they was just like, whatever. My right, man, just wait for them to open up. Get, get, get DJ, get the LeBron, yeah. son. Right. I've been here for thirty six hours. I ain't finna go home. I ain't gonna go home now. Uh, the old LeBrons that were that were the tightest LeBrons that came out with the Iron Man LeBrons and his first championship um, shoes when he won in uh, Miami because they were like South Beach. Themed. Yeah, them joints were bad. Uh, those shoes were fire. I ain't gonna lie, man. I was like, oh, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the one he wore in the finals last year, those were straight too. I ain't gonna lie, I like those. The ones he wore, uh, they're all black with like like the like the, the tone bottoms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are nice. Um, yeah, but other than that, can't be risk your life with some fucking shoes or anything. No, inanimate man. Not nothing that stupid. Not nothing that stupid. All right, that was that was that's it for the, the bullshit moment of the week. But uh, let's go ahead and get to the topic. Let's get it. All right, the topic this week, man. I was just thinking, I was just sitting up thinking, like, why are we such hypocrites? Mm. And <laughs> the the main reason that made me <laughs> bring this up was because you know what Lala and Carmelo Anthony is going through, right? Yeah. So how about Lala is gonna is making a reality TV show about women that's in the game? To extort 
married men or like athletes to get money from them. Mm. And that's what happened to her ass. That's why that's why she potentially going through a divorce because of a side chick. Of women like that. Women like that, yeah. Like, why are we propping up people that conduct this sort of behavior? Destroy lives. Destroy lives, but behind closed doors. Well, not behind closed doors, but out in the public. I said that wrong. Oh, God. But <laughs> out in public, we're just like, man, she a slut. She a hoe. Fuck them. Yada yada yada, and then like the the woman that she's doing a show with, uh, is supposedly um broke up Ti and Tiny's marriage. Oh hell! Yeah, and like, she's gonna be the main girl, so it's gonna just be like side. It's gonna be this is promoting the bullshit that we're trying to stop because mm-hmm. because it's okay, man. And, and the thing about it is, people that are well educated know this is entertainment. Yeah. For the people that are not well educated and then for our teenagers and our little and our kids coming up for the black for young black females, they see this as a way to come up. Especially yes. the ones that don't really have any skills but are fine as hell. You could tell a girl yeah. you could tell when a girl is fine and she don't have any skills. Yeah. Because she just accentuate her looks to like the t- the the tenth degree. Yeah. And you can't you can't tell me any different, man, because they they make sure their assets are seen at all time because they're trying to catch them a baller. Oh yeah, it's all it's all it's doing is just pretty much perpetuating the stereotype. Yeah, and just creating more hood rats. Look at Instagram and slores. Like, do I? Yeah, man. Like Instagram, man. You don't even need. I remember one time I was just thinking. I was like, yeah, yesterday I was looking at like I was looking at Instagram. I was like, man, you don't really need porn. You got Instagram. Pretty much, well, I guess for for those who but it was know, penetration. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. want to see some, you know, some some dead on nipples. Yeah, uh, yeah. You want to see some some shit get sprayed. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> you want to see some fluids flying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but yeah, man, that that's what I'm saying. It, it was the same thing. I was kind of. I was kind of talking about, uh, last week, you know, as far as, you know, the Atlanta housewives and things, you know, yeah. we, we perpetuate that stuff all the time, but then, you know, we go right back around and look down on people who do that, that sort of stuff. Like, you, it's kind of like, as you were saying, if you, if you're educated, you know what's going on, but if, if you don't, then it becomes something that you live by. And, you know, things have got, gotten to a point where they don't mean as much anymore. Like, like for example, marriage doesn't mean anything anymore. Because, you know, a woman, if she knows that she can come up by, you know, disrupting somebody's household, she will do it. And we'll have no shame about it. Yeah. But, you know... To go and if this is happening to you, to go and make a show about that, like that just lets me know that Lala don't have nothing else to do with her money, but find a way to come up quick, I guess. To, While she's going through this situation, yeah, I guess, I guess so she can, I guess it's free advertising or you know, or, or free marketing or whatever. Yeah, because she did. Like, Another thing I knew, I, I knew Lala won some bullshit. Well, maybe not, cause, cause Wall Space got money. But, uh, I knew she was kind of on some bullshit when she brought in Kim Kardashian as one of her advisors Come on, while nigga. doing this shit. Come on, nigga. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, man. It's... Who, who can, who can she advise? If you want to know how to be, you know, the kind of girl that prey on men, who of uh, men of means then yeah she's the perfect advisor oh yeah definitely but you know come on like you let's just face it like your acting career probably ain't going like you think it should so you're gonna you know take your money and you know come up with more reasons for for women to degrade themselves and devalue themselves and then be, be man man bashing yeah and bash and, your men when they when some of them breaking up happy homes be like he yeah. ain't shit I'm like wait a minute exactly you, <laughs> you caused the problem yeah huh? you caused the problem and then like like the dude 
wasn't a man of morals to begin with if he's messing with you. Yeah, exactly. Because he's not really a man anyway. But I just kind of started and I laughed. And I, and I was like, man, this thing will get at least five seasons. The people want to watch it because it's trash TV. Yeah. All right, that's all VH1 is, is trash TV, dude. Yeah. And Baby Boy. And um, <laughs> whatever popular movie is out right now. <laughs> It's usually not. It's usually not no no popular movies. It's probably like it's 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 kind of circular. They play the same kind of movies over and over again. I guess it just depends on the season. <laughs> yeah, how much money they spent on it? Because yeah. you know a, a network spent money on it when you like you see that movie like every uh, like every other weekend. Yeah, it'd be playing the whole weekend. It'd be like no other original programming on. No, like man, y'all broke bread for that movie. Like goddamn. Yeah. Like that, um, dang, what's that movie where, I know TNT paid a lot of movie, a lot of money for this movie. Uh, it's the one where they're like in these big ass robots and they're like, dang, it, these big ass robots and they're like, like, they're like in the robots and like walking around, like doing what, what, what dang it. God, dog, if I wouldn't even thought about it, I wouldn't know the name of the movie. But that movie, they pay a lot for it because they're always showing it. And it'll come up to me when the, when the damn show is off. Damn it. Mm. And they fight big ass monsters like Godzilla type monsters. Shit, well, fuck it. it, it <laughs> see how garbage this shit is. I don't even fucking know what it is. But yeah, man, I just think it's just a hypocrisy that we that we live in, man, on a constant on a daily basis, man. Where we'll we'll say one thing, man, and we'll just constantly do the other. Yeah, live another way. We we'll just live just living double lives, man. Just so many people out here just wear masks all yeah. the time, man. As if 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 you had to expose your true self, and, it, and if it doesn't reflect who you show out in public, and you would die in that instant, we wouldn't have that many people on this earth, man. No. Now we wouldn't. I know we'll still be here. I'm straight up. I'm straight up asshole all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this shit never turns off. Yeah. I'm sort of a nice guy, man, but I just hate letting people in. And then when, when they find out. I'm fun to hang around. They want to just suck up all my time. That's that's yeah. why I'm not really sociable because I, yeah. I know I want to hang out, man. And uh, I mean, that's the thing. That's the same thing with me. Like, I'm the exact same way. For instance, you know, because like I got off, you know, Friday, you know, so Saturday, naturally, you know, I'm, I just want to, you know, you know, just just chill and kind of, you know, just just hang back with, you know, hang back and yeah. be in my zone. Yeah. And, you know, it, there, I guess there's an opportunity for me to hang out with, I guess, some of my ladies' family or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just like, I didn't want to do it. You know, it's, it's not that, you know, I don't enjoy spending time with those people. It's just that I like being in my zone. I want to, you know, I want to kind of. I know what you're trying to say. You're trying to, trying to pretty much trying to relax. Yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, unwind from the week. Yeah, there you go. Because I can be, like, you know, I guess a, I, I guess a somewhat social butterfly, you know, in the moment. Because, you know, I can, you know, keep a conversation going, you know, stir up a joke here or there. And, you know, that's cool. But I think when people find out about, you know, when people find out that, you know, you're cool to hang around. Yeah, they, they want to be around all the time. And, I you know, you and I both you know, live on the sentiment in which we don't need new friends. Man, no, so, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, it's weird, but back to being like, you know, hypocrites, dude, like, you know, sometimes it's kind of easy to point the finger and it, it's it's very easy to point the finger at somebody else for doing something and then, you know, within the next five minutes, we find ourselves either thinking or, 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 you know, attempting to do the same thing. Um, you know, people at, people at church, you know, are exactly the same way. Like, you know, they, they will, you know, point the finger and tell you what you need to be doing. And, you know, and, and, and this whole time, you know, they're wearing a mask, but, you know, don't let you catch them doing something that they shouldn't be doing. And then, you know, next thing you know, a couple of months go by, you don't see them no more. Yep. Case in point, man. I remember I used to, I, it was, this, uh, it was a girl I was cool with. I remember mm-hmm. I went, <laughs> I went to church with, uh, 
<laughs> her and her family. Yeah. And they was all up in church talking about, yeah, praise the Lord. Yada, yada, yada. And I'm talking about, we didn't even get out the church parking lot. All you heard was, kill, douche, clank. I hate that bitch. You saw what she had on? <laughs> behind each other's backs we can't can't be open with each other i think that's a problem man we're just not open enough yeah that that and people you know don't want to hear the truth oh man like no that's i rather people rather i know like it's one person that they ask me for advice all the time and i used to tell them the truth and they didn't want to hear it and then after a while i was sugarcoated because i would just get tired of it mm, i don't do that oh yeah i can't i can't sugarcoat nothing and then after, as I should quote it for a while, I was like, man, it's not helping the person out. So I went back to just tell them the truth. Yeah. And they just like stopped talking to me. I was just like, man, like you can't live your whole life running away from the truth because we're yeah. back on it, man. You're gonna, you're gonna be depressed. You're gonna be like, man, if I if I only would have listened, or if I ever only would have. The problem is people ask for constructive criticism. Yeah. And they don't want it. Yeah. Well, they they. They think they want it. It's never really what they want to hear. Oh, like, man. Nope. for example, I have a cousin who, like, we pretty much, uh, we used to, we, we, we kind of used to talk a lot. Um, like, she would come to me about stuff and, you know, me, I, I have no filter. I don't like to bullshit people. Yeah. You know, if you ask me what I think, I'm going to tell you. Um, and, and that's just that's just been I guess my my issue is I tell people what they need to hear rather than what they want to hear, and you know to this day, I guess like she kind of you know makes comments to either uh, her mom or my mom and say that we don't really talk no more, and and like she. Points the finger at me like it's my fault. Like he don't he don't talk to me no more. I was like, wait a minute, you the one that don't talk to me. Like I'm not the only one that got fingers here. Like yeah. you can, you can call me anytime. Wait a minute. And it's, you know it's just it's just that I think when she saw that I wasn't gonna you know be a part of that pity party whenever something was not going right, you know I would always challenge her to look in the mirror and see if she was doing everything that she needed to do and in order to make sure that things were going to go as she thought they would and and more than more than likely she wasn't so yeah man like that's the thing and it's kind of weird because sometimes when you are giving people advice you kind of got to watch yourself too because you know yeah you definitely don't want to give somebody advice. You don't want to tell somebody how they're supposed to be living if you don't live that way. But it's, I don't know, it, it's kind of funny because you could be, you could be the scum of the earth and, you know, I guess if somebody knows that they're the scum of the earth, but, and yet they still try to tell somebody else, I guess, a, a way that they should live if it's in their best interest. I don't know, it's just kind of weird, dude. It's just, how do you do that? Yeah, it's kind of just like Joe Mixon, like somebody, uh, <laughs> somebody coming to Joe Mixon for, uh, advice or Joe Mixon, um, telling somebody they need to calm down and just talk it out. Yeah. They're like, hey, man, you, you hit, you hit the broad, yada, yada, yada. But people understand you can also learn from your, you can also learn yeah. from your mistakes as well. Exactly. But. That'd definitely be the case if, like, Joe Mixon was, like, still, like, you know, slanging bitches across tables yeah, and shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if that one on tape, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you were still doing it, then it'll, it'll be another issue. Yeah. 
Yeah, man, I just, like, man, I just brought, I just brought the topic up just to say, like, man, just stay in your lane. Yeah. Like, if you know you're out here doing foul shit, man, and you see somebody else doing foul shit, shut the fuck up. All right, y'all, that's our show. <laughs> <laughs> Finish bitch home, ST. Uh, yo, like always, man, we, we try to bring y'all that heat every week. You know, this week is no exception, man. We, 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 we're really trying to bring it home to y'all all the time, man. We just want to let y'all know that we love y'all. We appreciate all the love and support that we getting from all our Twitter followers, all of our Instagram followers, you know, everybody that's, you know, listening to the broadcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Audio Mac, you know, YouTube, all that, man. We want to tell y'all to keep it up. And, and you know continue to you know invite other people to come listen to the show man because you know our, our numbers are creeping up every week you know just just bit by bit so we you know we're trying to keep that going um man make sure that y'all continue to look out for you know stuff that we got coming up we'll be letting you know about it you know coming up later man we, we got stuff coming down the pipeline so just continue to to look out for the look out for EC and ST. Um, like always, man, uh, ignorance is not a handicap; it's a personal choice. And um, if there is no light, you must become the light. So be the light. I think that's about it, man. Uh, you got anything else? One eight seven seven cars for kids. <laughs> K A R S cars for kids. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I've been fucking around. All right, y'all. We'll see y'all next week. All right, y'all. Um, episode number 55. We're going to holler at y'all next week. Uh, don't be a hypocrite. Peace. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Black Canvas Podcast. We'll see you next week. Ah!